that I worked at. He was one of the original builders of the herb school itself. So we're here with uh, Martin in Vancouver. In the car. So what Hello. just happened? What just happened? What just happened right there? That was a butter tip. <laughs> this is butter, and that was what I did here was take a joint of marijuana, and on the joint I took a little dab of butter, and I catch it inside the bottle. Instead of sitting and inhaling on the bottle or on the end of the cigarette for 45 seconds, I catch it all and inhale it all at once. <coughs> I'll brew you out a little more. <coughs> so how, how can you create the bottle? There's another guy here with a camera, bald guy, big guy named Bert. He made this for me. Cool. Yeah, he was made for my birthday. It was really, really nice of him. He saw me working with a piece of a broken glass and made this out of kindness so I didn't cut myself. Awesome. How long uh, have you been smoking? I have been smoking since I was 14, I'm 43, so for 29 years, <coughs> as long as I can remember. I've been doing this since I was 16, smoking it like this. Uh, Martin uh, was also telling us a little bit about the history of prohibition yes, the history. here in, in Vancouver. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about that for our Spanish friends? Yeah, in 1907 there was a riot here in Vancouver. The Chinese people were working for one quarter of the wage, four times as long, and some Canadian citizens got really, really upset and rioted in their neighborhood, which drew the attention of the Canadian government. At the time, was William Lyon Mackenzie King was responsible as the minister. He later became the prime minister. Stepping back a year later, after coming and examining the entire situation, which turned out to be that the Chinese people were smoking opium in order to work four times as long for a quarter of the wage. That was their secret. The Canadian government discovered this and made laws governing all opium, putting it into the pharmacies, only saleable through Canadian government approved pharmacies. And the Chinese people were just had their opium taken away from them. And these laws began here in Canada in 1908. We did it to ourselves, unfortunately, and now we're fighting to change it. What do you think of the Kush Cup? The Final Kush question. Kush Cup is fantastic. I knew the boat trip would be awesome, but last night the highlight was the comedians for me. The comedians were awesome. <laughs> Mr. Leahy and Randy from yeah, we Trailer were. Park Boys were just so cool. I killed myself laughing. That was awesome. It was a really, really good night. Yeah, we have an interview with Mr. Lee. Cool, right on. With awesome. him, We were partying with, with Charlie Murphy last night, so yeah. Yeah, awesome. I was a little sore after a long day because I'm a pain patient. I suffer from multiple different kinds of pain. I had to go home. Yeah. I couldn't go to the after party. So how, how easy is for patients to get the marijuana in Canada now? You, it's, still pretty, it's still pretty tough. It, it's easier in most places to go and get it, but you got to go through some some rigorous licensing and government permission for something that should be free. I'm, I'm myself licensed for 30 grams. And I have my own grower back home. And it's, it's, it's cool. Oh man. Well, thank you for our band music. Interview for band music. Thank you. Oh, that's cool. Thank you guys very much for listening.